today's video, I'm gonna show you four things that if you do right now, you'll become a proper beginner adult student and will save you tons of time in correcting bad muscle memory into good muscle memory by just starting right from the start. Truly, you have no idea how excited I am for you. Let's dive into the video. All right, so the first thing you gotta do is you have to nail your posture. Notice how I am using the strap to hold my ukulele in place. But if you don't have a strap and you look to the internet, the internet will tell you that you need to hold the ukulele with your hand so that your thumb is free, and then this is how you carry it. And then your left hand will hold the ukulele at the first position with the thumb around the neck and you're, and you're gripping it like that to make sure it doesn't fall. Seems intuitive, doesn't it? Well, the problem with that is that now you have limited your right hand fingers to not be able to play. And if you're using only your pinky, you are creating such an unnatural tension here in your tendons that your fingers, even if you're able to play, they have the wrong angle on the strings, which is the opposite of free stroke, the proper right hand technique of playing with our fingers. But you'll have problems with your tendons, you'll get pain and your shoulders will be stiff and you will not be able to play all the things you want to play. In fact, you'll be limited to strumming with your thumb and maybe using your index on some notes. And that will significantly reduce your ability to play proper finger style pieces. Now, when it comes to the fretting hand, which in my case is the left hand, but if you're left-handed, that's going to be your right hand. You want to make sure you're not holding the ukulele like that because if you do, you'll be trapped in the first position forever. And guess what? As you progress through the grades, you will find that you need to go up the positions to play more dynamic, more fun pieces across the entire fretboard. But also, even if you're struck here, some chords have certain shapes that require your fingers to be able to stretch and bend in ways that you cannot do if your fingers are curled and holding the ukulele for dear life. So the way to fix that, I discuss it in detail in Ukulele Finger Style Basics course, so make sure you check that out. In fact, this is so important, I have three different lessons just to teach you how to sit properly with the ukulele. But you can see that I have a ukulele strap that is super short to hold the ukulele in place. I also have shell liners taped to the back of my ukulele at the bottom of my ukulele to increase friction with my body and if you can see it is staying up just by itself now when I play I can anchor it a tiny bit here with my arm so that my fingers are in proper free stroke and my left hand is in proper square posture and now I'm able to play freely across all strings and I can move all positions now this is the short version if you want the long version with detailed step-by-step -step on how to achieve these postures again check out my ukulele finger style basics course the link is in the description but to wrap it up about posture here is the philosophy that i try to instill in my students there are many different styles and there are many different things that you can do with the ukulele or the guitar and each one of them have their own different technique you cannot develop a different posture for every one of those techniques that doesn't make sense because you have a finite number of hours to practice to improve your technique and you cannot dedicate the some number of hours for every one of those postures and techniques. What you need is that one posture that allows you to play all different techniques so that whenever you're spending hours practicing something, you're actually dedicating those hours to those other techniques that you're learning. It's just a matter of different finger movements, but the posture is the same so that your body is relaxed. You go to an environment that you're comfortable with so you're not too stressed about how you're sitting and why things are changing. And most importantly, avoiding injury and being able to play in a relaxed posture. So yeah, whether it's from me or somebody else, one posture to do it all. Speaking about posture, here is something that a lot of adult students just hate to do and completely avoid it. But you need to develop it right at the beginning, starting from day one. That's right, I am talking about your baby finger, your pinky, your fourth finger when it comes to the left hand. Using your fourth finger on the fretboard, it is so important because there are so many songs that use it, whether you're strumming or playing in finger style as I do here on this channel. Playing with your fourth finger will free up your third, second, and first finger, which will mean you can play those lower layers at the same time as your melody layer. But also, it just makes sure that your hand stays in square posture, it is relaxed, you're not bending your string, and you're not doing anything funky. And also, as you go into the intermediate levels, you'll be able to do more because you're using all your four fingers and not just three of them. Trust me when I say this, a lot of students are so shy about developing their fourth finger. And I get it, it's hard to use, you've never used it. We don't eat with our pinkies, we don't write with our pinkies, we don't drive with our pinkies, but trust me when I say on fretboard instruments, the pinky in the left hand or the fretting hand is a vital tool that you need to develop right 
away. If you get taps from MK Fingerstyle Academy score, you will see the fourth finger indicated on a lot of the frets. Don't shy away from it, just use your fourth finger. Make sure you're at the tip of the finger and just, just, just use it. You'll get the hang of it in no time. Here is the easiest way to convince you. If you don't use it, it will never develop. Hello friends, in case you don't know me, my name is Mustafa and this is MK Fingerstyle Academy, a channel dedicated to fingerstyle content whether it comes to tabs and arrangements or tutorials and tips such as this one. If you found this video useful and you're thinking, I wanna take this to the next level, I really wanna dig my fingers deep in finger style. Well, look no further, I have the solution for you right here at MK Fingerstyle Academy and it is my course, Ukulele Fingerstyle Basics. This course has so much content in it, it is impossible for me to summarize in this video. So please check out the link in the video description. But in short, it will take you from the absolute beginner levels of Pro Grade, which is grade zero, and and it will talk you through 40 songs all the way to the end of grade three, which graduates you into the intermediate levels. How cool is that to have a structured curriculum that walks you from your literally first baby steps all the way to the end of the beginner level? It happens across 40 songs that teaches you techniques and walks you through step by step through context in those songs to learn those techniques. So if you're interested, check it out. But for now, let's go back to the video. And moving to the third thing that I see people do all the time, that is assign Pima to your strings. In case you don't know what I mean, the internet teaches you that your hands is divided into four fingers and that is your thumb, index, middle ring, P, I, M, A. And then the internet would then go on to teach you that you need to assign those fingers to the four strings on the ukulele, P, I, M, A. And that is great and very convenient and intuitively it seems correct. But there's a common theme when it comes to beginner students. Your intuition is your worst enemy. This might feel natural and you feel like you're gonna be able to play finger style, but finger style doesn't match this technique. There are only a few songs that you can play properly with Pima assigned to strings 4, 3, 2, and 1. And for the nerds out there, if you wanna know what songs these are, these are songs where whenever you play the next note, it's on a different string. Any song where you play two notes or three notes on the same string, you cannot play Pima anymore. Okay, so any song where the next note is on a different string consistently throughout the whole thing, you can play Pima, but if you have a song where you have repeating notes on the same string, you can't use Pima anymore. The proper way is to alternate your right hand fingers. And if your fingers are assigned to the strings, well, you cannot alternate anymore. There are many other reasons why you shouldn't assign fingers, and that has to do with string sets or bass lines that are on strings four, three, and two, where you have to play it with the same finger to maintain consistent tone and volume. But I talk about all of these here on different tutorials on this YouTube channel, but also discuss them in detail in the Ukulele Fing Style Basics course. So again, make sure to check out the video description if you're interested in proper pedagogy and structured curriculum course. But for now, do not assign your fingers to strings four, three, two, and one, unless you know for sure that the context you're in allows you to do that. I'm just gonna take a quick break from this video and ask for your help. If you've enjoyed this video and are learning from it, then please help me make it more visible to other students by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. These will help me improve the video when it comes to the algorithm and how it is ranked and makes it more visible to other students. Better yet, make sure you comment. Comment, tell me what you're liking. Tell me if you're discovering stuff for the first time. So yeah, like, subscribe, and comment down below. Now, let's go back to the video. And the last item on the list is that you need to know what your positions are. And positions simply refer to where your left hand is on the ukulele. There are certain rules and guidelines on how to decide on the positions and how to expand them. But the simplest way I can explain them is that if you pick your first finger and you put it on a fret, then you are in the position of the number of that fret. This is fret three, so I am in the third position. And now I have my first finger on fret three, second on fret four, third finger on fret five, fourth finger, on fret six. This is my third position, second position, first position, seventh position, and so on. Now, why is this important? It's important because there are certain scenarios where you have, for example, and adult students, when they see this in tap format, they will play the following. They would use the same finger to move up and down, and that will result in some sliding noises that are not good, and in most cases, the legato will be off. If you notice how I played it, I played it in, that's one position, different position, back to the original position, 
So do yourself a favor, and whenever you're learning a piece of music, if you see that you're moving positions a lot, decide or determine what position you're in before you go. The general rule is your first finger to the fourth finger have to cover the span of four frets, and that's usually how you're able to span your position. And if you're having difficulties picking those positions, just book a private lesson and your teacher will help you. But yeah, the biggest mistake here is that you would use the same finger to go up and down across multiple positions rather than just moving your entire hand with the four fingers per four frets position rule. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to learn a song at the prep grade, that is to say grade zero and for that I have prepared this video here which is a very easy song and a tutorial that walks you step by step through that song so pick up your ukulele apply all the four tips we've learned today in this tutorial right here come on click don't leave me hanging 